Hey everybody. I'm going to give you all a few minutes to get on and um, start watching before I begin. Gonna comment on here that I'm live. What is this doing? Hi, Yvonne. Hi, Yvonne. I'm just going to give people some time to get on. starting to come. Hi, Jamie. As you join in, please feel free to say hi so I know who you are and where you are and that you're on here. It is snowing in Maine. Hopefully it's a lot nicer weather wherever you are. So while we're waiting for everybody to um, get on, I think what I'll do is just give you a little tour of what I have prepped. Hi, Anna. Hi, Colleen. So I'm going to go ahead and give my camera a turn so you can see how I have everything prepped. Um, and you'll know how to prep your stuff yourself. Preparedness is the key. Is it? It's cold here in Maine, too. Oh, see? <laughs> Today's the day for snow, I guess. Hi, Alexandra. Okay, so here I have my towel ready for my hot jars. Um, I have my canner lid already washed. Um, already checked my seal. Did a light washing of it because um, I don't want it to be, get too dry out. Dried out. Um, canner is ready. It is cold because we're doing cold packed chicken today. Um, that's raw, so we don't want the canner on because we don't want to have any shock to the glass. Um, so. I'm going to go ahead and just check my vent. Do you want to hold that? So focus on the vent. So you can see how that's done. So I'm just going to take the pipe cleaner and thread it through. So I know that that's clean and clear. And same way, all sets of holes. The other way you can do this is by holding it up to the light and checking, but it is a good idea to just run a pipe cleaner through it every now and then just for safety's sake. So, canner's there. I've got my funnel here. I've got some tongs to handle the chicken, a spatula so I can move it around appropriately. Um, I've got my utensil, which I put a new mark on for one and a quarter inches right here. See it right there in that light? Because chicken that's raw pack needs a headspace of one and a quarter inches. Got my books there for reference. I've got my lids here all prepped. One lid per ring. Make sure you inspect your rings before you use them. So if they're dented or too rusty, you're not using them because you don't want anything that's going to interrupt your seal. And then a cloth to wipe the rims. Okay, and over here I have my chicken. It's all prepped, nice and cold. So this is my drumsticks. You can see all the fat in the 
skin has been majority, the majority of it has been removed. Um, there's also some thighs in there. Hi, Angela. Hi, Darlene. And then here is a big bowl of chicken breast. Um, fat's been removed and been chopped up. And then here is a bowl of what we trimmed. Now, I've mentioned before, oh, I didn't know I had an accent. <laughs> well, thank you. Um, I've mentioned before that I waste nothing. So now you can see that there's quite a bit of small bits of meat that would be pretty hard to take off um, with a knife. Um, so what I do is I save these. I'm gonna go ahead and freeze them. And then when I make um, bone broth again, what I'll do is I'll roast these with the bones and then I'll boil them and get all the meat bits off. And then of course the fat can just be skimmed. And that will add extra flavor. Hi Lloyd. So I'm gonna go ahead and bag that so we can get that taken care of. Just gonna get the bag out of here. And then, Nate, you wanna put a plate on this and put that in the refrigerator so it stays nice and cold? We're gonna do the breast first. hold the phone for me so I can get that fat in the bag. So now we'll pull this and seal it. And my son's gonna go ahead and put that in the freezer for me. So my jars are already pre-washed. They're sitting in the, in the dishwasher. I'm not particularly worried about them being hot because like I said, we're going to be cold packing that chicken. And If you're using bone-in chicken, Angela, then yes, you want to go ahead and skin it. Um, even with chicken breast, boneless, skinless breast, um, or if you got boned chicken breast, um, you would want to skin it because the fat, as it processes, will float to the top. The more fat you have, the more likelihood you have of disrupting your seals. Hi, Lynn. Yeah, so you would, you would definitely skin it before this phase. So, okay, so we are ready to get going. Nate, you wanna come in the phone while I start getting? And I'm gonna start with pints because my small chicken, I'm going to be using for, um, my boneless chicken I'm gonna be using for chicken salad and soups and whatnot. So, and with this, we're not going to add any broth. And we just want to drop it in there, keep it loose. No po poking stuff down. I want to get rid of that big bubble. I'll get a bubble in the bottom. See that big bubble right there? I'm gonna kind of move it. But I don't want to really smush it, so I'm gonna kind of let it do its thing. We want to make sure we have appropriate headspace, which is really important when you're dealing with meat. Yeah. I want to 
create any air pockets. We want to go kind of quickly because we don't want the chicken to warm because it is something with all meat, really. You don't want to temperature too far. Okay, then we'll grab some more. The light camera will hold 22 pints. So I'm going to keep going until I have what I think I need. Any questions so far? One second and I'll answer your questions. What time is it? I'll answer your questions in just a minute. And the other reason I want to make sure there's no big pockets is, without smushing it down is because I want the juices to be able to go through and cook the meat, but I also don't want to um, underpack my jar or overpack my jar. Um, I don't want it to be tight so that the juices siphon out. I don't think that's too much. And I just cut the chicken in slices and then chunk the slices. And you can choose to keep the slices long. Um, for my personal use, I like to have them in chunks. And I'm just going to grab some more that's seven, so I'm going to grab another four. So because my can of just 22, I'm going to have 11 jars per layer. And because I'm not adding broth, I don't really, you know, I don't have to worry about removing bubbles. I just don't want there to be large air pockets. space in it. So 
So I just want the chicken to naturally fill the spaces without it being packed. If that makes sense. <coughs> so I'm just gonna give them a quick check. I think this one could maybe use a little. Those three are definitely good. Good. Yeah, I think that one's good. Now, a lot of um, old time canners would add just a little bit of broth in this. I'm not going to um, because number one, I want the chicken flavored with its own juices, um, not any additional additives. Now, I am going to add salt. I'm going to be adding a half teaspoon salt per jar. If it were one quart jars, I would be adding a whole teaspoon salt. Babe, can you take them in the other room? No. She, no, 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 no. Oh, absolutely not. I'm sorry. No, no, no. She's doing kind of cell. Um, okay. Bear with me one second. Alan, can you go in the other room? Sorry. My husband's calling my mother-in-law, who I love dearly. <clears throat> okay, so now we're going to bring these over here. You want to follow? Might be helpful if they can see. Give them a wipe. And give them a twist. Same deal with the next one. And just, you know, check, make sure you didn't double the lids because once it's gone through the heat process, you cannot reuse it. <clears throat> I'm sorry, there, I'll just bring the rest over. You have an issue with you. Just ignore that. The phone does that for some reason. I don't know why. Sorry, my phone is giving my son warnings that are kind of crap. So, um, for you all, because you're not familiar with the headspace, definitely be measuring. So, right there. And you can see all of these would be in the appropriate headspace. If you have a small edge piece poking up, don't worry about that, but... Sorry, I should have been doing that right along so that you all could get in the habit of that. Um, it's easy to forget when you've been canning for a long time.
check in this jar because the spot is discolored. No, yeah, it's just crust on the outside. Very minimal though, so it's not gonna affect it. Here's the line. And again, you know, I really want all of you all to be checking your headspaces every single time. Um, and really, it's not a good idea to get lazy like I am <laughs> with checking it. Yeah, see that? Now that ring is not going to work. It's too much rust. them in the canner and you can see if you look in here the canner lines before I set these down you can see there are several marks there's one here there's one here and there's one here way down that one at the bottom right at the water level that is the three quart line and that is where you want to have your water and I've already added the two tablespoons a vinegar to help keep my jars from discoloring. It is raw chicken. Um, and I don't think this is going to fit 22 white mouse. I think we're going to be Normally small mouse, I can fit two, one here, one here. That clearly is not gonna happen because of the space the mouth has. But that's okay, because it doesn't matter. So this is where you guys get to learn about tearing. So here is here is the second tier. Sorry, I had a piece of fuzz on that and I don't want any fuzz from the towel on that so you just set it in like that I have been doing it a very very long time so since it only fit eight so I'm gonna do five more all right so I'm gonna stop just a second and answer questions and then I'll finish those five Nate do you want to take five jars out of the Dishwasher. Okay. You're welcome, Angela. Yes, Debbie, Deborah Snow. <laughs> After a week, I put HR to check them out. Darlene, was your chicken that you had issues with the smell, was it bone-in or was it boneless? I know you said it was thighs, but sometimes you can get the, the boneless, skinless thighs. And did you do it with or without the skin? Okay, so canned chicken, um, for bone-in products such as thighs or drumsticks, um, what I typically use them for is pop the top, give them a rinse to rinse the salt off of them, and I stick them on the barbecue. Um, you don't have to parboil, <laughs> it makes my life so much easier. Um, you just add a little barbecue sauce and it's good to go. Great when you're having company over. It really lessens the amount of time that you're in the kitchen working. Um, as far as this chicken, the chicken breast, um, what I can do with that is I'm going to use it for soups, stews, lunches. We can have um, chicken salad sandwiches, um, things on the go when we're running short on time. I try to keep some stew canned in my pantry. Um, meats and veggies so if we need a quick lunch we can just pop the top heat it up and we're good to go what 
What is the best small appliance to use to seal the jars? Melissa, there's really no shortcut um, with sealing jars. You have to use a canner. There is no, no getting around that. Meat is not safe to do in a water bath. Um, I have never used an electric, so I would not advise one because I don't have the experience in it. Um, I feel like that would be poor judgment on my part to advise you of something that I've never worked with. Um, so yeah, I mean, that can be one of the pieces of equipment. If you guys want to put together a list of things you'd like me to um, test, we can put that on the list of things that we can seek for vendors to donate so we can give it a whirl. Um, but really, a pressure canner is, is going to be your best bet. The size pressure canner you get is based on your personal needs. Um, please remember pressure canner and pressure cooker are two different things. They're two different, two different um, tools to use in the kitchen. They are not interchangeable. You can often pressure cook with a canner, but you cannot can with a cooker. It is raw chicken and canning salts. Chicken requires one and one quarter inch headspace. Thank you for your grace, Melanie. I appreciate that. But I, I still should be doing it consistently because I want to set a good example for you all. My canner is cold. This is one of the few times that I will do a cold start. Most vegetables that you do with a hot pack, um, you'll have a hot canner. Even some vegetables that you raw pack, you'll have a hot canner and hot jars. Um, because the chicken was cooled in the refrigerator and it is at refrigerator temperature, although it's probably quickly dropping right now, um, you definitely want to start with a cold bath and cold jars. Boneless without the skin. Okay, so Darlene, was it fresh? And do you know how long it had been in the case if you bought it from the store? Was it expired? Was it something you pulled from your freezer? Those are all um, questions I would wanna know. Yutana, it's okay. Um, <laughs> don't ever be sorry for being in your garden. That's not a bad thing. You can always watch what you missed later. Yes, it's called a pressure canner, Melissa. Okay, so now that we're caught back up, I'm gonna go ahead and fill the rest of these jars. You wanna come on over here, Sunny Boy? I'm gonna have him man the camera again. Does the cold bath in a slow heat up? Yes, it is to prevent shock from the glass. Okay, it could be that it was um, too long in the freezer. That would be my first guess. Um, if it's foul smelling, then I would not consume it. Um, Melanie, I do not rinse my chicken, and here's why. Research has shown that rinsing your um, produce, um, other than now that Corona is a thing, um, I do wash my produce now, but rinsing chicken and other meats can actually cause bacteria to go up the spigot of your faucet and can contaminate your water and other things. So I do not wash my meat. And besides that, because it's going into a pressure canner and it's cooking at 250 degrees, it's going to kill anything that was possibly on it. Was it in the freezer or photo? It might, darling, it might've just been on the cusp of going when you bought it and then freezing it, you know, added to the flavor. Um, but I, I definitely would not consume it if it has a rank smell. Um, the good news is botulism is odorless, smellless, and taste, I mean, odorless, tasteless, and not visible. So probably not botulism, but it is a sign that it could probably be a different type of bacteria. You're welcome. Okay, so I'm gonna have my son take over manning, and then I'll catch up on more questions after. Did I just say canning? Filming. How about filming? The boy doesn't do the canning. <laughs> he could, though, because he knows. He's had a lot of experience helping. And I do want to give a shout out to my husband because he helped me with skinning. Oh, I bet too much of my jar, clearly. Um, skinning the thighs and drumsticks. 
and finished the last two breaths for me while I was getting on because I was worried I was going to be later than 1.30. So we're going to turn on the other lights just so that you tower over. And I might reduce that breath, you know, just give it a second after I move the meat around. Elijah, can you come get a plate and put this back in the refrigerator? Thank you. Just move it. Again, don't pack it down. Just, you know, kind of move it around so you don't have any big pockets of air. You want your juices to fill up those spaces. That one, yeah? Shuffle this over here. Okay. That one's way differently. Yes, you can just set it right in there. Put a bolt, put a plate on it so it stays covered. Actually, let me see that because I think I can. Well, I think that's good. Nope, I'm good. Thanks, though. So. I'm just going to give my hands a wash quick. Okay, and then we're going to go ahead and add our salt. Wipe the rims. That's good. Stay on the outside. Okay. So we're gonna go ahead and give them a wipe. And you want to make sure you don't over tighten your lids because remember you don't want to have them fold. So just a finger is tightening on them. Okay, so we're going to move these ones to the canner. Go that way around. Sorry, just directing as my son films. So really, truly, the prep work for this is just the easiest. Um, that jar is questionable. I think it's gonna tear my crack. I'll change it. And since I don't want to have to restart my canner and I do not want to lose anything. Okay, so that is what a two-tier 
fill looks like. So now I'm going to put my lid on, turn to lock the handles. Make sure your handles are nice and tight. Here you want to make sure this is even and not wiggly. I had my husband tighten this handle today because I realized it was a little bit looser. And then we're going to go ahead and put the stove on high. Now, because we use high, um, we want to make sure we never do this without the canner rack in it. You don't want to shock your glass. So now it's just a matter of cleaning up the work surfaces. And I'm actually going to wash my utensils between because I don't want any bacteria building up between canner loads. And the next load, because we got almost all the breasts, we'll have a little bit of breasts, but mostly um, legs and thighs. Okay, I'm going to scroll back so I can read this. Sorry, I'm filling my sink at the same time. You're welcome, Melanie. You're welcome, Darlene. Oh, thank you, Rose. You're welcome. Okay, so Melanie's asking if I ever season the raw chicken with different seasonings. Um, you can. I choose not to because most of the time my family likes garlic, Italian seasoning, things like that. Um, and I don't want to have any little bits that are going to float up during the heat process. And for lack of a, uh, yeah, I don't, I don't want it to float up during the canning process and then take a chance a bit gets disrupted into the seal. Excuse me while I clean. Um, so no, I don't. The other thing with that is if I season it, then I'm limiting what I can use it for. Um, whereas if I cook it without the seasoning, can it without the seasoning, I can season it as I choose for whatever I want um, when I'm ready to actually use it. And one second, I just want to clean this face. So because I am working with raw meat, I am using some Clorox. Okay, so while that's heating up, I'll answer the rest of the questions if I don't fall on my butt first. How long does canned chicken last in the pantry? A year. Um, after a year, you're gonna lose flavor and quality. Um, it will still, like more likely than not be safe um but it's not going to be as flavorful melissa said for tightening as soon as it's snug type of tight snug and you just take you know it's you get a feel for it as you do it but you just twist it when it stops you do you know just so the point where it slips out of your fingers you don't want to wrench on it you don't want to be rough about it because you'll end up having folded lids with bad seals and you'll either have to reprocess or stick it in the fridge and use it up quickly, which defeats the purpose if you're canning. Thank you. Nate, they said you're doing great. I agree. He's a good boy. Okay, so Sherry says we did chicken the other day. Thought it smelled like boiled onions. I think there's a vinegar in the can there. Oh, good for you, Sherry. Um, probably, and if you had that smell, it may not just be the vinegar. You might have actually had a little bit of juice, si juice siphoning. Um, if you did, then just make sure you're being careful about the head space. And you might, if you did it with a broth, if it was pre-baked or partially baked chicken, if you did a hot pack versus a raw pack. It could have been just a little bit too much broth. Um, it's to help with the acidity, um, Melissa, and the flavor. Um, you cannot put it in there. Um, I have a child with a low sodium diet because of kidney issues, so I just give it a rinse. So it doesn't really hurt anything 
to add that half teaspoon to teaspoon of salt, depending on whether you're doing quarts or pints. As, yeah, as soon as you know you've got a good close, Melissa, you stop. You don't, don't wrench on it any further. It's a half teaspoon per pint. Oh, thank you, Melissa. I don't know about amazing, not all the time. <laughs> but I'm glad to do it. I figured when um, I was first encouraged to do this, I figured, oh, why not? You know, everybody's in quarantine. It'll give everybody something to do. Never imagined it was gonna go like it has and take off the way it did, but I'm happy to do it, so. Okay, so let's talk about time. So depending on where your elevation is, um, how far above sea level you are, um, you may need to increase the um, pounds of pressure. So we're doing pints, and even though there are, I didn't do 22, I did 20. Yes, 20. You're welcome. Aw, thank you. Um, so even though we're doing pints and there are two tiers of pints, um, we are still going to process the same amount of time um, no, Kathy, uh, you don't want to slow heat your canner. Um, number one, the minute the canner's on, it's going to start heating up um, the water inside, which will then in turn heat up the rack and the jars. And of course, you have to remember the base of those jars are already setting inside. Um, that steam is also going to warm the glass as it goes up. Um, so, and you want to build that canner heat as quickly as you can. Melissa, you read that you should not can on a glass top stove. Is that true? And if so, why? Yes and no. Um, and here's the yes. Yes, because if your manufacturer says you may not can on a glass top stove because it will chip or dent or break your stove, then absolutely abide by what your manufacturer says. Um, if your stove is newer, likely you're able to can on it provided you're using a flat bottom pressure canner or a flat bottom water bath canner. Um, the ridges on the bottom of the pan do make a difference because as they go through the rocking motion, as things are bubbling inside, um, you can end up with minuscule chips and nicks that lead to cracks that will eventually disrupt the surface completely by causing large cracks. Um, some stoves allow it as long as you don't have more than an inch of overlay on the burner itself onto the outside glass because if you heat that inner glass that's not meant to be heated, um, of course the temperature fluctuation can make it crack. So that's a yes and a no answer. Okay, so going back, we are going to, um, we're doing pints. We are doing it without the bone. So we are going to press this, this for 11 pounds pressure for 75 minutes. We don't increase the time just because we have two, two layers versus one. If or uh, when we start doing the bone in chicken, um, then we will do 90 minutes for the quart. I'm sorry, no, wait, let me try to take that back. So 75 minutes without bone for pints, 90 minutes with quarts, and then with bone is 65 minutes for pints and 75 minutes for quarts. And I'm going to be using quarts for that because I have, you know, chicken legs and I, I not chicken legs, um, drumsticks. I didn't want to have to trim off the knobs the joints. You're welcome. So it's going to take a few minutes for this to get warm and start warming up the canner. Once it's warm, it's going to start venting the steam from the vent pipe. We want it to vent for a solid 10 minutes with a good steady stream of steam that we can feel or see. Um, you want to make sure that you have proper venting though because it affects the pressure inside the, inside the unit. Any other questions? And I probably will break this live up um, because of the fact that it is going to take a little bit for the temperature to come up and begin our 10 minute timer. And then we have 10 minutes there and then we'll be processing it um, for the 75 minutes. Um, 
Sorry, I'm trying to move my computer too. For the 75 minutes, uh, you know, I don't think you're all wanna gonna sit here and watch my camera with me. Yes. See, Melissa's in agreement. She sat through one of these. It takes a couple hours. Yes. So for um, pints, with bone is 65 minutes. And for quartz is 75 minutes. And for boneless, pints are 75 minutes. And quartz are 90 minutes. And you wanna make sure that you do not skimp on your time at all. You don't wanna decrease your time at all. If for whatever reason your pressure falls, even by so much as a half a degree to one degree, um, you want to restart your timer once you're back up above that pressure. Darlene, the reason you vent your canner is because, number one, the manufacturer says so uh, for proper use, but it has to do with the canner's ability to build up steam and make the proper pressure. Um, so that's why you have to have it to the three quart line with liquid so it gives it enough liquid to produce the pressure, I'm mean, sorry, to produce the steam for the 10 minutes. Um, but still leaves adequate water in the canner to create the pressure that it needs with the steam to heat your food through and to seal your jars. So as we go on and off live, um, I'll try to give like a five minute warning um, as far as a post and then when we're done and the meat is all finished um, after both the boneless and the bone in, are all processed, then I'll piece the videos together and upload them to YouTube so there'll be one continuous video on YouTube. No, it will not hurt the meat if you have to process it twice. Um, are you talking about a, just a general temperature drop or are you talking about like if your seals fail? Even if your seals fail, it's not going to hurt the meat at all. But I will say, if I were to have this process and the seals were to fail, then because the chicken is cooked, I would then recan it with a broth. Or add broth enough to make the headspace desired. Because as you cook meat, it shrinks. Um, no, and if, if you're in the middle of processing and you you know, drop pressure for whatever reason. Um, no, you would just go ahead and turn up your stove, get the proper pressure built back up, and then start your timer again, and it will not hurt the meat at all. Any other questions? Okay, so if that's it, I'm gonna go ahead and sign off and I will come back live um, once we have some steam showing, okay? And then I'll probably go back off unless you guys have questions for that 10 minute period. And then once we put the weight on, I will go offline until the time is up and, um, but I'll keep you on, I guess, until pressure is built. Okay, so if you have any questions, just write them down and then uh, when we jump back on, you feel free to ask them or comment on this post. All right, thanks guys. Okay, so I'm back. Um, I don't know if some of you will hop on to see this quickly or not, but we are starting to build steam. You can see it coming out of the pipe now. It's a pretty good steady stream, so we're gonna go ahead and put on a timer for 10 minutes for the venting. And when that is over, then we'll go ahead and add our weight and it will start building pressure. So that's it for the next 10 minutes and I will hop back on when we add the weight and then we can build pressure and answer any questions you all have. Okay, thanks.
Okay guys, so the timer is just about to go off. And there we go. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and shut off the timer. And we're going to grab our wheat, and we're going to put it on. And that's pretty much it. Pretty soon, the vent lock will come up, showing us that the canner is locked. There we go. And now we're just going to wait for this dial to get up to the 11. And that's pretty much all there is to it. We'll do some... We're going to go ahead and leave the um, heat up to high. <clears throat> and then as we, once we get up to appropriate pressure, then we will slowly back the heat down until we hit our sweet spot to maintain the pressure at, at a heat. And I think I've showed you before, but on my stove, it tends to be about here. So that's all there is for the moment. And I'll get back on in a little bit unless you guys want to do some Q&A while that's building pressure or if you want to see if you want to see how we adjust the pressure as we go so just let me know but until I hear from you all or if I don't hear from you all or whatever I'm gonna go ahead and sign off and um, if you want to do Q&A, we can do q and I'll get back on. If you want to watch how we adjust the stove, I'll get back on and we'll do that too. Have a good afternoon. Okay, so we're back and we are up to pressure now. So now it's just a matter of making sure we stay above 11 and we don't want to go up too high because we don't need it to be up to 15 or course we don't really 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 don't want it up in the danger zone um, so we're at 12 right now and so this is about the time where we'd start go ahead and maybe gently ease back on the heat so I always like to do small amounts and I'm gonna go ahead and start the timer and because we're doing pints without a bone, we're doing 75 minutes. So timer, 75 minutes, start. And for as long as we don't go below that 11, we're gonna maintain that timer at 75 minutes. And that's pretty much it. So we're just gonna keep an eye on it um, and then just continually drop the heat on that until we hit the sweet spot. And um, of course you never want to leave your canner unattended because it is a tool and it can be very dangerous if you get over pressure, if it gets over pressurized. So, hi Melanie. So now we're up to 13. So I'm just gonna go ahead and drop it back a little bit more. Let me see what I'm doing there. Yes, 11 pounds of pressure for 75 minutes now because we're doing pints. If we were doing quartz, we would be doing 90 minutes um, for a meat that does not have a bone or chicken that does not have a bone. Rabbit is pretty much the same whether you're doing bone in or bone out. So as long as we don't drop past that 11, we're good to go. I'm gonna go ahead and drop it back a little bit more. You can see I'm already down to the quarter mark. Um, I went live when, let's see. Let me check my, my thing. I went live when I added the weight. 
So let me refresh this. Like 20 minutes ago. Um, to the yeah, to the 11 probably about 20 minutes. And let's see. Yep, 20 minutes. So not long. Seems like forever though when you're on a live and you know, not having physical conversation back and forth. <laughs> so you can see the temperatures back down to a little bit over 12, but not up to 13 where it was. So we're just going to continue to monitor it until we get that sweet spot. And then once it hits the sweet spot, you know, I can general, genuinely putter around the kitchen, you know, and just keep an eye on it. You'll hear it hiss and gurgle and, you know, do its thing that it should. Um, if you have a version like the All-American where you have a jiggler, um, once you hit up your pressure, you want to make sure that you're not getting more than one to four jiggles per minute. Um, more than that and it's too much. So, you know, it's just a matter of learning how to do the adjustments and keeping an eye on it. So any other questions? I see there are now seven of you. And I normally just bring my laptop in the computer, you know, in the kitchen and that way I can putter on doing other things, work on my business stuff or socialize or things like that. And it's still snowing in Maine, why? I was hoping the snow would be gone. Snow is not what anybody wants for Mother's Day weekend. So just to see, you can see on the dial of my stove, we're almost to the sweet spot. And we're at a good 12. Yes, it's snowing outside. We had some snow actually ground covering this morning, but thank God it melted off. So hopefully it's not enough to disturb, you know, the apple buds and things like that. See, we're right on the coast too. So that's really all there is to it. Any other questions? So now we just have, I can't see because of that glare. 70 minutes, just shy of 70 minutes. So I'm just gonna keep an eye on it, make sure it doesn't go up any higher. Um, if it goes up a little bit, I'll drop it back just very subtly. A little bit at a time you don't want to take away too much heat at once because you'll lose too much pressure um, and then you have to restart the whole process which is the pain in the rumpus so I'm just gonna sit here and babysit it and that's pretty much it so when the when no we're doing boneless I have boneless breast processing right now um, I'll do the bone in immediately afterwards. So once this is processed for the full time, I'll shut it off, take it off the burner so it drops temperature quickly. Um, and then once the gauge is to zero and the lock is down, I'll remove the weight and then let it vent for 10 minutes. And then I'll very carefully open it, remove the jars, and then put the canner back on the stove. I may even change out the water. Um, just because the meat in the fridge is cold and I don't really want to put cold jars in hot water for the shock, prop, um, shock, blah, 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 tongue tied, shock, um, likely, likelihood of that happening. I don't want that to happen at all. So I probably will change out the water just to be safe. 
um, and reduce the temperature of that, but I want to make sure the canner, the pot itself, is not hot because I don't want to warp my canner. Scroll up. It took about 20 minutes to get to 11 pounds of pressure. And yes, I leave it at 11 pounds of pressure for 75 minutes. So that's pretty much all there is. I know I've said it like six times now. So I'm gonna just kind of leave it where it's at if it's not going up any higher. We're almost at the sweet spot. Every stove has its own spot. Mine is just a tad lower, I'm pointing more towards that red light. That is coming next. So once we're ready to reload, that I'm going to be doing in quart jars. I do have a few jars um, left worth of the um, boneless, but I can run that with the bone in. Um, the bone in will do um, longer, but it won't hurt a thing. No, actually it's shorter. Why did I say that backwards? So the bone in can run longer and it won't hurt a thing. But I probably, Bone in is 75 minutes for quartz, which is what I'm doing. Um, without bone is 75 minutes for pints, so I may be able to just, depending on how many quartz I have um, on the second or the third load, put the rest of the breast in with it. So not too shabby. We'll have a good amount of chicken breast put up for quick lunches or meals or casseroles or whatever. I will try to give a five minute warning, Melanie, on the page um, when I'm going to start. So, but once all the little snippets of videos are done, um, then I will put them together um, and upload them to YouTube. So it will be one continuous video, but just not as long as sitting here waiting out the full 75 minutes. Okay, so we'll see you all in a little while. Bye. Hey there, we're back. So the timer has gone off. I'm gonna shut that off and then we're just gonna move the canner and shut off the stove. Okay, I'm gonna have my son lift it for me so I can film while he lifts. I just want to make sure it's centered on the trivet. And then you're just going to let it set here and cool. And when this dial gets all the way down to here and the lock has dropped, then I'll go live again. We'll take off the weight. We'll let it vent for 10 minutes. And then we will open it and take our jars out. And that's pretty much that. Any questions? All right, so we'll be back in just a bit. Okay, so we're back and pressure has dropped to zero. The lock is down. So we're gonna go ahead and take off our vent. We're not even really having anything come out. So that's good. We're still gonna give it the full 10 minutes. And we'll be back at the end of 10 minutes to open it up. Okay, we're back. We are about 30 seconds from the timer going off. And then we're going to open the canner and take out our pints of chicken. So... Sixteen seconds. And my son is going to man this. Hi, Lori. While I empty it. 
Okay. So as I showed you in the other video, the lock is dropped, completely depressurized. And we're going to very carefully open it up the back, let the steam come out the back first. Slowly move the lid. Okay, and now we're going to start on loading. Look at that nice boil, and that's all juice from the chicken. And once they take these out, we're going to let them rest for a full 12 to 24 hours. My preference is 24, only because if we have any warmth on the inner parts of the jar, we don't want it disturbing the seal. Look how nice that looks. How nice that looks. You want to make sure you don't bump the jars because hot glass under pressure is very easy to fracture. Okay, now if you get a look inside the canner, the rack is in there, and oops, hear the ping. You do not want to use your fingers and reach in there and grab that rack. You will get burned. So what I like to do is I have a little ladle with a hook and I try to just angle it so I can scoop that in and pull that out. And you just want to set that aside out of the way. And then layer number two is ready to empty. Three more to go. You can hear the jars pinging away. All right. And you can see there's still quite a bit of steam coming out of the canner. And because I have a second load to do, and I am cold packing the meat, raw packing it. I'm going to go ahead and dump this to get rid of the hot liquid, let the pot cool for probably five to 10 minutes, and then refill it with cold water, set it back on the stove, and then I'll come back on live and we'll refill, or not refill, but we'll fill quart size jars with um, drumsticks and thighs. Yes, I had two two racks in the can. Did you hear that? That was a pretty loud ping. <laughs> um, so we have, I think I figured out, I have 20. Two, four, six, eight, 10, 12. No, I have 16. We know. Yeah, I do. I have 16. Eight per row. Small mouth, I would have been able to fit 22. Hi Susan, hi Melanie, hi Tammy. Yes, if you're going to stack, you have to have a rack. 
You, you cannot stack your jars if you do not have a rack. Oh, did you hear that one? Pretty loud. So that's pretty much all there is to canning chicken breast. And like I said, I still have more in the fridge um, that needs to be canned. But I also have the drumstick and thighs that I want to do. So I'm going to pack those first. Um, that way you guys get to see those. And then probably if I don't use all of my drumsticks and thighs for the second load, then I probably will have a third load of some drumsticks, thighs, some uh, chicken breast. And because I'm mingling that, I'm going to run it at the longer time for the boneless meat. Bone in meat runs less than bone in. You're welcome. No rack, no stack. Absolutely, Melanie. Do you leave none in? I'm not sure what you mean. So that's pretty much it. Um, I'm going to get my utensils back out and prepped, get the cooler can, uh, the canner cooled. Um, I am leaving the bone in because I'm raw packing and I want to be able to use it for barbecue meat. So I'm just going to leave the bone in on the legs and thighs. If you pre-cooked it and we're doing a hot pack, then in addition to removing the skin, then you could remove the bone and thighs, but it's not necessary if you're doing a raw pack. Any other questions? Okay, so I'm gonna let you go so I can go ahead and get reset back up. And when I'm about five minutes out, I'll send out a warning post to let you know I'll be going live in five. And we'll go ahead and start doing thighs and drumsticks. All right, we'll talk to you in a bit. Hi, so we're back. And we're about ready to start loading jars for thighs and drumsticks. Are y'all tired yet? Because I am. <laughs> um, hmm, what is it saying uploaded for? Okay, so Nate, you want to come over here? <laughs> My son's tired too. He's kneeling on the floor. All right, let me turn this around. So I've already added a teaspoon of salt per jar. Okay, so same deal. Actually, let me turn on those lights because your shadow is so big. Bear with me one sec. There we go. Shed a little light on the subject. Okay, so we're just gonna go ahead and put drumsticks in the jar. I'm thinking I'm going to be able to get three if not four per jar. Yeah, three. Three is probably going to be it unless I have a smaller one. And I may actually want to trim I think it's up too high. We're just going to give it a twist. That way we keep the headspace we want. I really don't want to have to trim the bones if I don't absolutely have to. There we go. That's better. You know, I'm not quite happy with that. These ones are much shorter. Let me see. 
Hey, babe. I might need you to come over and cut these for me. Let's see if they're awake. You might be even snoozing in the chair. Elijah, is dad asleep? Can you turn your head and look? Yeah, I'm just not gonna get the headspace with that that I want. What do you think, Nate? Can you trim it? I think the kitchen shears would be too flimsy, so I think I'd better use the bone saw. When in doubt, cut it out. Give me one minute. I'm gonna wash my hands. Yeah, I won't get you on the film. My husband doesn't want to be filmed. Okay, so I'm going to turn this around for a second. It doesn't matter when you add the salt, Melanie, as long as it gets added. Lloyd says, I noticed you use an electric top stove. It's recommended for pressure canners versus gas top. Actually, Lloyd, if I had my choice, I would be using gas. Um, this is just what was in the house when we bought it. Um, but gas has always been my preference. I feel like they're much more rugged most times. But you can use either or. The only thing you really have to be careful with is um, is getting glass top stoves with flat bottom canners and checking with the manufacturer warranty that you can use those on your specific stove. Melanie said, I've always seen the response to be check with the canning manufacturer maybe the stove manufacturer. You're welcome. My husband's just washing his hands so that he'll, he's gonna cut the tops of the drumsticks off the knuckles. So, um, normally like this one jar here, I don't know if it will turn. This one, you can see, I'm gonna have a good amount of headspace. So I don't need to worry about that. Why is my light on? Um, but these other ones with the longer drumsticks, that's not gonna give me the full inch and a half that I, or inch and a quarter that I need. So I'm gonna have him trim those. So have any of you worked with a bone saw before? I won't show you. <laughs> I know you don't wanna be videoed. This one is fine, these ones. Just, they just need the tips to cut off. It's just too tight. Hmm? All right, so he's gonna go ahead and whack those off. <laughs> you had me turn the blade in before, remember? He's gotta flip the blade around. Be prepared. And you want to be careful when you're using a bone saw. It's very, very, very easy to get injured. 
especially if you have a good sharp saw. Break a leg, exactly, literally. These chicken parts are quite large, actually. No? Do you want to try the shears instead? I didn't think the shears would be strong enough. That's why I didn't give them to you. Well, while we're waiting for him to figure out how to deal with the legs, we will go ahead and start packing thighs. So this one is done. Mm -mm. See how they have to be, they, I have to have an inch and a quarter headspace. And those ones are so tall that they're sticking up to here. Which, so they're not gonna give me the headspace I need. Pain in the bum, huh? I'm just gonna move these legs over to this plate. Um, barbecue, Melanie. Really and truly, they're best for barbecue because you don't have to parboil. Oh, he's he's using the meat mallet to break the leg. Holy crap, look how big that thigh is. Nate, can you get Dad the shears? Because my hands are kind of full of chicken. Look how big that is. Excuse me as I whirl around the kitchen. Yeah, that's just giving me the space I need. So that's going to be it for that jar. Judy, I believe so, but I would have to check and verify first before I say if that's a hard yes. Um, most people don't do wings only because there's so much bone compared to meat. And it's pretty near impossible for you to be able to get the skin off of a wing. My husband is such a handy guy. Thank God. Um, the bone, the knuckles, I'll just put them in the freezer and we'll boil them with the bone broth stuff. Yes. Um, the average rule for meat is one year. Um, that said, it can be good after a year. However, um, the quality and the flavor may be less than what it originally was. They're the best, Melanie, aren't they? So I'm just going to... I'm just going to stick that right down the center. No, that's too tight. So I was able to get four in that with the knuckle trimmed. Nate, can you come hold this so I can manipulate this with two hands? It's a little bit difficult with one hand. Yeah. Thank you, love. <laughs> he hobbled the chicken. I don't know if you guys have seen that movie, but... Let's 
stick, see that little pocket right there? Let's stick that down in there. And then, I'm gonna give it a twist so I get the headspace I want. Yeah, I think that will work. Yep, perfect. So we're going to get exactly seven jars. Hmm. I think I'm going to use some of that breast meat to top these off just because I don't want to be shy on headspace. And I want to make sure that these are free to move as they cook. Make sure there's room for that juice to get in around. Do you want to grab? Actually, Elijah, can you come open the fridge? Because my hands are all chicken gross and brother's hands are holding the phone. Quick, quick, please. People are watching and I'm sure they don't want to wait all day. Thank you. Yep, that bowl of breast meat. So I'm not going to worry about pushing it down and packing it. I just want to raise the head space. Because I really, I don't want it packed tight. but I want to make sure I have adequate space for the head. Um, that jar has a chip. We can't use that jar after I already have it filled. We're going to have to take that jar out and put a D on it so it's for dry goods only. I think that's probably good. Can you use your other hand and open this so I can get another jar? Pull that. My hands are off the chicken goat. Ooh, easy. Alright. Okay, so now I'm just gonna take. And these things happen, guys. This is just something you've got to be prepared for. And I'll just have to add another teaspoon of salt to this one. Be careful that dishwasher's still open. Okay. And this one go back in the fridge. Start moving these over to this counter. Just like I'm comfortable.
there, this there was a hot pack, I would be getting it in the canner just as fast as I could be. Those were some of Speaking of rust on the ring, when we are done loading this canner, I have something I want to show you all, just so you'll be aware of why it's good to keep up, you know, on what rings are good and what rings are ready to be retired. When I say retired, I don't mean like, you don't have to throw them out, but you can use them for dry goods, as long as it's not something that you need to have an airtight seal. I'm not checking the headspace on these because I already did over at the counter. So these, ch the chicken, um, two bags of breast, two 10 pound bags of breast, and then a 10 pound bag of thighs and a 10 pound bag of drumsticks. Two new tablespoons of vinegar. Would you go grab that for me? Okay, so canner is loaded. Everything is in here nice and even. Um, and as soon as we get the vinegar in there, we'll be ready to start it. Oh, I'm so glad, Melanie. It is a cooperation station here. I'm very lucky I have good kids and a husband that doesn't mind. Can you grab that measuring? The, yeah, the fat bottomed one. It's that song, Fat Bottom Girls Make the World Go Round. <laughs> my, my son's going, don't say that, Mom. Don't say that. Okay, go ahead. Bring it over here. All right, pour it right in the water. And that's pretty much it. And that's just to keep the jars from staining. Now we're gonna put the canner lid on. Lock it again, make sure it's super tight. Make sure your burner is centered on the bottom. And put your heat up on high. So you can start warming the pan. Now I said I wanted to show you something in regard to rings and I know I showed you well I didn't necessarily show you but some of the jars that I did earlier I did use older bands and I want to show you something do you see this this is where the ring is breaking down and rusting dripping down on the jar and it stains it um, that will come off um, because we put vinegar in the water so that's another benefit of making sure that you always put the two tablespoons of vinegar in the water so that that vinegar will steam and that way that stuff will wipe right off. So I probably won't use that ring again. I probably will toss it just because it is that, you know, that rusty. Okay. So if you have any questions, let me know. I'm going to let this go until we start seeing steam and then I'll jump back on live so you all can see um, a good flow of steam and then we'll put the timer on for 10 minutes, come back on, build up the pressure, um, and then we'll go from there. Is there a reason you cold pack versus hot pack? Yes, I'm lazy. <laughs> to be very honest, um, you can absolutely hot pack your meat, but when you do a lot of canning, you're going to want to take as many shortcuts as possible. Pressure canning is a long process because you have the build up, the you know, the time to vent, the cool down, venting it again, then unloading, then repacking your jars. So it's a process. Um, 
doing cold pack with meat because meat has so much juice in itself to help you know circulate through the meat and cook it um, that is actually saving me time if there was a specific type of flavor I wanted it to have I suppose I might be more inclined to do a hot pack um, if I wanted it to have just a chicken bouillon flavor or you know some of my own chicken stock then I would pre-cook it um, but it really it just saves me saves me time I don't have to heat up broth or water um, I don't have to partially cook the chicken I don't have to debone it so it just saves me some time any other questions that was a really good question Renee Okay, well, it looks like that's it, and we will be back with you when it is time to start timing the steam. Have a good afternoon or evening. Time to make supper. Go make supper. <laughs> hey guys, so we're back, and we've got steam coming out of the canner. The sizzling is our dinner. So I'm gonna go ahead and set the timer for 10 minutes. We're gonna let that steam continue for 10 minutes for venting. And then we'll add the weight on. And then we'll start working on building up pressure. So we'll see you in a bit. Okay, so we're back live. Timer just went off. We are now going to put the weight on start building pressure there's our lock and now we just have to wait for 11 pounds pressure and then we'll start timing the um, countdown to when our thighs and drumsticks will be done now because I did add a little bit of boneless skinless in some of the jars and I don't want to take any chance of there being any and even cooking, even though it was a very minute amount, I am going to extend the time. And instead of doing 75 minutes, I'm going to do 90 minutes just to make sure I'm fully accounting for both the bone in and bone out chicken. So that is how that's going to work. So we'll have 90 minutes. Um, just going to wait for pressure to build, adjust the heat to make sure we don't exceed. 12-ish, 12, 13. Um, I don't like to go past that. It won't hurt anything if you do, but just my preference. Um, I certainly wouldn't want to go ahead of like 15 or something. Um, but it only needs 11 pounds, so yeah, so that's all we'll do. And then in, it's probably going to take about 10 minutes to build up to pressure, and then 90 minutes that, so an hour and 40 minutes. We'll be back live. All right. So really, really not nothing much for us to do. Um, I might jump on once we get up to pressure, just to again show how we cut back the temperature on the burner itself to find the sweet spot to keep the pressure up with the lowest amount of heat possible. All right, so that's it for now. Any questions before I sign off? Okay, so we'll see you in a bit. Hey guys, so we are up to temperature. Um, I've just started the timer for 90 minutes. And again, we are 90 minutes because we have both boneless and bone-in meat in here. So in addition to the breast, we have the um, <laughs> thighs and drumsticks. So normally quarts for dry thighs and drumsticks would be 75 minutes. Um, and boneless would be 90 minutes, um, but because we have a mix of the two, we're going to go with the higher time and just do the 90 minutes. So we are at pressure. I just did my first turn down of the burner and we'll go from there. So we will see you in 90 minutes. 
have fun. Okay, so our timer is off and we're gonna shut off the canner and then we're gonna move it over to the trivet to let it cool and drop pressure. And then we'll open it and uh, get our jars out. So if you wanna just carry this over, I won't show you. I'll show my dirty stove instead because we just made supper and didn't wash it. It's very hot. Be careful. Okay. Supper dishes haven't been done yet either. <laughs> so there we go. And we'll just wait for that to drop. And then once the airlock is dropped, I'm sorry, no. Once the pressure is dropped and the airlock is dropped, I'll go ahead and take the weight off. We'll vent it for 10 minutes and then we'll open her up. So there we go. See you in a bit. Okay, so we have zero pressure and the lock is at zero. I mean, I'm sorry, the lock is dropped. So we're gonna go ahead and take off our weight and time of depressurizing for 10 minutes. And then we'll be back in 10 minutes to open her up. Okay, so we're back. Timer's up. And it's time to open the canner. Nathan, do you wanna come man this camera for me? Oh, you wanna do it? Okay. Am I just gonna man it for me? Oops, go ahead and hold that. Steam out of the back. Okay. And we're already pinging. Look how beautiful that looks. Okay, one more jar, and that's it. So these will rest until completely cooled, 12 to 24 hours, and there we have it. That is how you can both bone in and boneless chicken. So I hope that was helpful for everybody. If you have any questions, let me know. I'm going to go ahead and get all these little snippet videos put together and upload them onto YouTube so you can watch them as a continuous if you want to. And if there's anything else, let me know. Okay, have a great night.